Hey, it's Tom from Mystery Game Fight Club, and recently, I grabbed myself a Mr. FPGA. So I thought I would put it through its paces, and especially in systems and titles that have been difficult to run in emulation, or on low-power systems like the Raspberry Pi. This is going to be a bit less formal than some of my other stuff. You know, like anybody else, I just want to see what runs. So, here we go. Starting off in the 8-bit and 16-bit eras, I wasn't expecting a lot of issues. And of course, everything is great here. Games from any region are no problem at all, and so far as I can tell, it all works as it should. However, I did want to spend some time on ROM hacks, as these are known to trip up some emulators. Mega Man The Sequel Wars is an in-progress ROM hack that aims to replicate Mega Man 4, 5, and 6 in the style of Wily Wars. Interestingly, on the analog Mega SG console, this ROM hack has audio issues. Here in Mister, though, there are no such problems, and is a joy to play, I should add. One ROM hack that stretches the absolute limits of the Genesis hardware is Ultimate Mortal Kombat Trilogy, a ROM that weighs in at a hefty 10 megabytes. That doesn't sound like much, but on a Sega Genesis where most ROMs are only hundreds of kilobytes, 10 megabytes is massive. Indeed, some emulators don't take to it very well, and the analog Mega SG refuses to even try. Mister, on the other hand, doesn't seem to care. Keeping with Sega in mind, an oddity from the time period was the mushroom-shaped 32X add-on. I was especially curious how well this performs in Mister, since most modern emulators don't support it on open platforms like RetroArch. The single emulator that does, PicoDrive, is very hit or miss when it comes to 32X. I fired up Zaxxon Motherbase 2000, since this game runs very poorly in emulators. I was delighted to find it runs full speed in Mister. Rounding out testing from this era had to be Doom 32X Resurrection. Granted, it runs reasonably well on most emulators, with much of that credit owing to the Resurrection team themselves, who have thoroughly optimized this game across a broad range of scenarios. No surprise, it runs flawlessly inside Mister as well. I won't say much about the handhelds, but I will mention I thought it was really cool to include multiplayer. Now if you're looking for four-player action, you're out of luck, but just the fact that you can do a two-player virtual link cable is good enough for me. Also very briefly, arcade games are here, but few of them are actually from the golden age of the late 80s and 90s. Much of that work is being done by Jotigo, with a trickle of Capcom and Konami games every so often. I do not envy the amount of effort that this must require. Unlike a home console with a specific set of hardware, arcade hardware is kind of like a custom console that usually only runs one or two games each. There are exceptions, of course, like Neo Geo, but that is very rare in the arcade industry. Moving on to disc-based systems, I first tested out the TurboGrafx CD. Mostly because it's a console I missed out on, and not because of its emulation complexity, per se. Even most people that have played it simply stop a Castlevania Rondo of Blood, maybe a shmup or two, and that's about it. In general, I had a good time exploring the library, and there were no issues that I could find. And while we're talking about the Turbo Graphics, shoutouts to the Turbo Graphics versions of Ninja Gaiden and Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu. Other than the obvious differences in graphics, 
There are miscellaneous changes like level design and boss behaviors on some occasions. It's worth checking out. The Sony PlayStation emulates well on a wide variety of devices, so I expected this would also be the case in Mr. And yeah, it's all good. Nothing obvious really stuck out, so the odds are whatever you throw at it will work fine. One note to add here is that you are likely to get better performance sticking with the BenQ format rather than CHDs. I was disappointed too, but if you stick everything in its own folder, it's pretty transparent. The Sega Saturn core on Mr. is in progress, but even with that in mind, emulating the Saturn is notoriously difficult. So when I fired it up, my expectations weren't exactly the highest. Honestly, I would have been happy just to get some Guardian Heroes. Maybe Radiant Silver Gun? And anything else would be icing on the cake. To my surprise, even the imperfections with this core are not that bad. The worst offenders I could find relate to the audio. Either the music is a bit behind, or there may be a loud staticky sound when it switches audio tracks. Japan-only games like Super Tempo and Layer Section 2 run well. And of course, I had to check out Primal Rage while I was at it. I've also been dabbling with Microsoft DOS and Windows 95 to results that are much less spectacular. DOS for the most part works okay, but Windows 95 is just not worth it. The Mr. AO486 core is closer to traditional emulation than, say, a reverse engineering project. For now, it's better to stick with PCEM or 86 box and Windows for that kind of thing. I will say though, the loading screen for Hexen on MS-DOS is so good. Three, two, one, go. The Nintendo 64 deserves a highlight of its own because this was long considered the impossible Mr. Core and yet, it's here. Low power systems have had a very hard time with N64 emulation, and I was concerned with how the Mr. would perform. Like the Sega Saturn core, this one is also in active development. It's clear from my testing that there are some ways to go still, but what is also clear is that when everything works, it's a dream come true. Killer Instinct Gold, even among N64 games, is one of the more difficult titles to run at full speed. But this in-progress Mr. Core is doing exactly that. Ultimate Doom 64 is not especially difficult to run, but it did used to crash some emulators when you opened up the map. I don't know why or how, but it did. No such problems here though. Actually, I can't remember the last time I played Doom 64 using a single analog stick. I might have to try that again. Huh. Anyway, moving on to the Turok games. This series defined first-person controls on the Nintendo 64, so it seemed only right to give them a go on Mr. Turok's 1 and 3 both seem to perform well. I... I will bear the burden of my fathers. But Turok 2 struggles a bit. It would seem there's just a little too much detail for the core to keep up with. I'm confident that future development can resolve this, though. Child rescued. Thank you, Turok! Star Wars Rogue Squadron is another title to give traditional emulators a lot of headaches. Often the FPS dips just trying to render these mission start sequences and might not improve much. 
I would hesitate to call it running perfectly on the Mr. Core, but it is holding its own far better than I expected. You're just trying to impress me. So that about does it for my Mr. Testing at the moment. If there's something specific that you'd like to see running, give me a shout. But thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you again soon. Doodles.